Hey boss, welcome to the Blogger Breakthrough Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Stapleton from elizabethstapleton.com and founder of the Blogger Breakthrough Summit. Today we're talking with Tracy Phobes about earning money with sponsored content. What you're about to hear is a session from the 2020 Blogger Breakthrough Summit, and I'm happy to say she's going to be speaking again at our 2021 summit, albeit on a slightly different topic. Registration for the 2021 Blogger Breakthrough Summit is opening up really soon, so if you want to make sure you get notified when registration opens, be sure to join the Blogger Breakthrough Summit newsletter. The link for that is in the show notes, or you can just go to bloggerbreakthrough.com forward slash newsletter. Now, let's go ahead and take a listen to part of her summit session in 2020 and learn more about how to make money with sponsored posts. How do you find opportunities? Okay, so there's a couple of different ways. Actually, there's three different directions you can go. One is through networks. The second is to pitch yourself. And the third is you get pitches back to you. So I'll kind of just touch on each of those. So networks are out there where you can sign up. And these companies these that want people to write, they come and find you through them. One of them, for example, is called IZEA. I-Z-E-A. Mm-hmm. Free to join. And you sign up, you connect your analytics, your accounts, everything, your social. And then what happens is these companies who are looking for somebody who maybe has the same target audience that they want to reach, the same demographic, the same social, they will reach out to you to say, hey, we think you're a fit. We'd like you to write for us. And you go from there. There's also where you pitch. This is where you cold email companies. Um, For example, like if you happen to be a financial blogger and you follow Dave Ramsey, you might pitch their PR department and say, hey, I write this kind of a site. I think that your um, every dollar app early, I can't think of the name of it, but I think it's every dollar. I don't know. I'm I'm literally my my personal finance site, my most popular post is why I don't like it. Okay. Okay. But see, that's, it's funny. Like that's the whole point. Like you reach out and you're like, I think this would be a fit. Let's talk. Then you start the conversation and you go from there. And the third kind is where the company comes to you. And once you start writing more and you have more of a social presence, you'll start to get these emails. A lot of times they might be DMs through Instagram or they could be messages on your site, direct emails, et cetera. But then companies are going to come to you and say, we think you are a fit for fill in the blank. And we would love to work with you to create sponsored content. So that's the different ways we find the people that want to work with us to give us um, or to pay us to write on our site about them. Yeah. It's it's just, it's one of the things. And I think that you get so excited when someone wants to pay you that you jump at the dollars and we just can't do that as bloggers because your integrity trumps money every day of the week. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I just, I kind of wanted to touch on that. Okay. So once you've, found an opportunity or received one kind of what's what's that pitch look like what's that next step if you get a pitch that you're actually interested in taking up their offer so yeah that's a great question so once you get a company's like hey we'd like to work with you the next thing you always want to do is you're like great here's my media kit your media kit is a resume that we have for our blog it includes a lot of factors you will tell them who you are you're going to include your target audience kind of who it is you are writing for, because let's say we, you write about retirement and this is a company about retirement, but they're targeting the 40 plus crowd. You write for the 25 to 40 crowd. Your audiences are different. So you want to always have your audience in there. If you've worked with other brands in the past, you want to mention who you've worked with because when you can name drop, like I was able on mine, I've worked with Staples and Dollar General and Walmart and Target, yeah. these national companies that made people go, Oh my gosh, If they worked with her, we need to work with her. You'll also include general stats, such as your page views, your social uh, accounts, different things like that. And as the most important thing you have to have on there is your contact information, not your phone number. Do not put your phone number on there because you do not want that out there. Trust me. Unless it's like a Google phone number or something. Unless like, yeah, you have a Google voice number. That's fine. But your cell phone. Yeah. You don't want that on there. That would be a, big mistake, trust me, but that's your media kit. Then the next sheet that you want to have is what we call your rate form or your rate sheet. And it is the supplement to your media kit. Your rate sheet is where you let people know what you charge. My trick that I recommend is the three tiered rate sheet. Tier one is basic. I will write a post about you. That's it. Boom. 
The second one could be something, I'll write a post, I'll share it on all these social channels, I'll put it on Pinterest, I'll put it in my newsletter, you know, you can put different things. Your top one can be, I'll do a video, I'll do all these extra things. Yeah. And you have levels that people buy. The funny thing when you do that, you might experience what I do. I never had anybody buy my least expensive package. Okay. They always started with my second one okay. because they wanted more. Mm -hmm. So we want to think about that when it comes to your pricing structure. So you pitch that back to them and then you might even have some ideas. Hey, yeah, I think you're a fit. Here's what I think we should do. I think I should write a post. I think we could do really good with this. Or, you know, I think it'd really be fun to do a Facebook live where I'm using your product or I'm planning on going there anyway. Can I just like tweet and use a special hashtag where I'm talking about my experience? Mm -hmm. So you have to think about, how you think you could use that. Some brands will already know what they want mm -hmm. and you can see if that works, but you start giving ideas as to what you're comfortable doing because you don't want them to come and say, yeah, we want you to have a Twitter party. And you're like, I've never done one yeah. because you aren't comfortable with that. Yeah. So you just, okay. Hopefully this little snippet helped motivate you to get started with monetizing through sponsored content. Be sure to join me next week when I'll be sharing tips from Serena Apia about how to make the most of YouTube until then have a great day.